Hey guys, welcome back and thanks for tuning in. Today we're looking at the Ruger PC Carbine. I've done a fair bit of shooting with this in the uh, past several months and have had it out here tonight for a little bit of a refresher course. So I wanna talk about my experience with this gun and give you a little bit of a field review out here. Now, uh, I'm just about out of daylight as you can tell by that awesome sunset back there, but no worries, we've got technology. So artificial light is uh, making up for the natural light, which is abandoning me. All right, so let's talk about this PC carbine, which I do think is actually a pretty special and pretty special, I don't know. What I'll say about it is Ruger, really like swung for the fences with this one. As far as the quality that went into it, some of the features that I don't see on a lot of other pistol caliber carbines, um, and basically just this, this whole package and the potential that's wrapped up in this whole package. Um, like I said, I think Ruger really swung for the fences. Did they knock it out of the park? Mm, that's another question, and we'll try to address that um, as we review this gun. Let's talk about some of the features on it and I'll get to some of the, you know, some of the stuff that everybody else has talked about already in a little while, but right now let's get to some of the specs and some of the reasons that I think that they did in fact swing for the fences with this guy. One of the key things is this right here, the barrel, which is fluted, as you can tell there, and look at that. That is very nice looking fluting, got a nice matte co uh, coating on it, and it's got the uh, little peep aperture, rear aperture, and then the sort of guarded front post sight, non-glare post sight. I don't think that, that moves. I know that the sight itself can pop off, or can be unscrewed and lift off, um, but as far as, it doesn't look like there's any adjustment there. I think all the adjustment is back here at the rear, which is perfectly fine. Uh, the barrel itself, not just fluted, but also it's made of cold hammer forged chrome molly steel. So that right there is kind of a big deal. On an AR-15, if you wanted to get a cold hammer forged barrel, you're generally paying um, a premium price for that. Okay, it's not like it's an insane amount of money, but it's something that's sought after. People like their cold hammer forged barrels. To have something like that on a pistol caliber carbine, um, tells me that they didn't want to just create a fun gun, okay? They wanted to make something that is really durable, it's going to last a lifetime, be able to pass down, you know, to future generations and so forth. Once again, kind of evidence that Ruger has swung for the fences with this guy. Again, I mentioned the fluting, it's a 1 in 10 twist on about a 16 inch barrel. It is threaded up there to allow for some kind of a flash hider, suppressor, whatever you got. Um, my um, Amtac Hornet in 9mm, which is an over barrel suppressor, will not go over this. I actually checked the diameter of this barrel versus the inside diameter of that over barrel section. It won't go over it. So even if I did remove the sight, I wouldn't be able to put an over barrel suppressor on this, or at least not the Amtac. Tack Hornet. Maybe there are others that'll work fine. Uh, pretty much any other 9mm suppressor obviously will work. A couple other details about it. I did do a velocity test with this gun uh, tonight to get a sense of how that 16 inch barrel worked for 124 grain load. So I shot the exact same load through both my Glock 19 and through this gun to get a pretty good fair apples to apples comparison. 97, 81. Ruger PC Carbine. 1233. So you're getting a good velocity jump. It's not like 357 level, but it's pretty good. So moving away from the barrel, let's talk about the receiver, which is a solid block of 7075 billet aluminum. So lots of good strength there, as well as some good weight savings. The bolt, chromoly, and they've done something pretty interesting with the bolt to um, shorten the travel, as well as sort of reduce some of the felt recoil. They added a tungsten weight, they call this dead blow tungsten weight, that, and I'm not sure how that's fitted in there or all the construction of it, I think it's pretty interesting and I'd love to take it apart at some point, probably won't. 
but that helps to reduce the felt recoil and also shorten the travel of the bolt. So you don't need a long uh, motion going on there. Uh, it's fairly short and I do notice a pretty nice light felt recoil. Overall length of the gun is right around 34 inches. Length of pull, I think with the butt pads, or sorry, the butt pad spacers all added in, is something a little over 14 inches, and then it comes down, what was it, to 13, 12? I can't remember exactly, but uh, good adjustment there. So you can pull these two spacers out that you can see um, in order to sort of shorten that length of pull if you want to. I'm uh, fairly tall, six foot two, and that length of pull is actually perfect on me. I wouldn't want something any shorter than that, really. Quick look at the stock, which is very traditional looking. Obviously, it's you know Ruger's own take on sort of the traditional rifle stock, uh, with a sort of semi pistol grip to it. Feels nice, you know. Has it locks your fingers in a little bit down there and feels really good. A little bit of grippiness there, a little grippiness here on the fore. Uh, we might as well get to one of the points that everybody else talks about, which is the fact that it does disassemble. So it's got this little lever here in the front, exactly like the 1022 takedown. So you just pull that. Um, up like so, rotate it, pull straight out. Set that thing in your backpack, your bag, your box, whatever. When you're ready to take it back out and shoot, that's all there is to it. Holds in place very nicely, doesn't wiggle around. It's um, rock solid, just like the takedown 1022 always has been. Covering the safety real quick, it's a push through just like on the 1022. So you push through right there, you see red means you're dead and then you're on safe. The magwell right here, you can see that there's a little cutout right there. That means that uh, this magwell is actually uh, swappable. So I can pull this out and put in a different one. The one that's in here right now is the Glock Magazine magwell and it comes with the gun. Um, it comes standard installed is the, um, the SR9, I think it's the SR9, the SR9 Ruger Magazine uh, and Magazine Magwell. So that mag comes with the gun as well as that magwell, but all of that stuff swaps out very quickly and very easily. All the tools to do that swapping come with the gun as well. So there's no hunting around, there's no buying stuff to set this thing up to work with magazines you may already have. Again, like these Glock 33 rounders. It's just ready to go from the factory to do all that stuff. Talk about the mag release right there. You can see it come through when I push on the opposite side and that's how you pull the magazine out. So there's the mag release. I think you can swap that back and forth. I haven't tried doing that. One thing you definitely can swap back and forth is the charging handle right here. Okay, so you can see that there is an opening and a groove right here for the charging handle to be right here on the right side, but then it's very easy to swap it here to the left side. So let's take just a couple of shots at uh, the targets that are set up right over here. You can feel that bolt lock back when it's done as well. Speaking of the um, locking back bolts, and we'll go ahead and eject that mag. And again, one thing I love about the position of that mag release is that if you're gonna go to grab that magazine, your thumb is right where that mag release is. So you slap the mag, thumb hits it, pulls right out. Very well thought out design there, very well engineered. So again, talking about the bolt and how that locks back, it's real similar to the 1022 where we have this little latch lever right there that allows us to um, lock it back. So we just rock our fingers forward like this, pull it back, push that in, let go of the bolt, let go of the latch. Pretty much just like the 1022. So if you're familiar with the Ruger 1022, which if you're a gun person, you probably are, um, you're gonna adapt to this Ruger PC carbine very, very quickly. So having just shot it, let's go ahead and talk about the trigger pull on that. How does it feel and how heavy is it? So we're on fire and we're charged. I happen to have my trigger puller right here, my little wheeler trigger pull. So let's go ahead and see what that weight is. Start with one. 
and that came in at four pounds. Nice, not bad. One more time. Yeah, just under four pounds that time. Do one more just to get an average. And just a hair over four pounds. So pulls right around four pounds, which in my opinion is perfect. Trigger is crisp. Little bit of a longish reset. Not really, but it could definitely be shorter. So if there's one thing I would like to see improved about it, shorten up that reset. Couple last details on it. You can see that there is a sling attachment point here at the rear, as well as one there at the front. We also have a small section of Picatinny rail right there at the front. Now, in order to use this, what would you use it for? Probably a bipod. I would like to say you could put a light there, but most of the lights I've tried to fit there need to drop down a fair bit to kind of defeat this little uh, sling point right here. So I would like to maybe have that sling point move back an inch, half an inch even. Um, I think that would definitely be an improvement. I don't know if it would change things ergonomically as far as how the gun is used, but if you want that rail to be very, very useful, this does need to come back just a little tiny bit. This gun, in my opinion, and I'm not an engineer, I don't know for sure, but in my opinion, this is the starting point for probably a large series of PC carbines. Um, hopefully we'll see one in 45. I would love to see a 45 version of the PC carbine. I think a ton of you guys would like to see that as well. You know, we we'll probably see it in other colors, some camo colors and stuff like that in the future. Does this have real like hunting applications? I think that this could be a decent critter getter, you know, a little uh, bunny shooter or something like that. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty accurate. By the way, I haven't talked about accuracy at all yet. This gun compared to, um, let's see, I think the last one I tested was the uh, FX9 carbine from Freedom Ordnance. That one, I'll show you sort of what that, that group looked like uh, at 25 yards. It's a little pockmarked, a little spread out. This guy is extremely tight, and I don't have that with me right now, but I'll show you a little insert footage on it. That 25 yard group, again, with the red dot and from a bench rest was very, very tight from 25 yards. Okay, and that was not letting the gun cool down. 33, 34 round string just kept going. As far as accuracy is concerned, Ruger took their time with this one, really considered and thought about accuracy, and I think they achieved some pretty exceptional accuracy with this gun. Once again, the 25 yard groups I did were unmagnified, so if I had set a magnified optic on top of this gun, probably would have seen an even tighter group than the one I got. Um, considering what I had, an unmagnified red dot, pretty dang good group. Right on! Right on! Yeah, that's not a bad kid. Now, one last thing. Did Ruger actually succeed in knocking it out of the park with this gun? That's the real question, right? They swung for the fences, but did they knock it out of the park? I've seen, I think, three failures tonight. Just tonight, shooting the same stuff. 124 grain freedom munitions. Could be the ammo. I've also shot uh, let's see, some SIG jacketed hollow point, some Hornady critical duty, we shot some blazer aluminum, we shot some Freedom Munitions um, frangible, some Hush ammo from Freedom Munitions, as well as their match stuff. All of that fed just fine, but we have seen three failures on their 124 grain new manufacturer uh, 9 millimeter. It is what it is. I think one of those was on a, um, an ETS magazine. The other two, I believe, were both on Glock magazines. So we could say it's the ammo. I don't know yet, though. Probably need a lot more data to be sure. But um, what we can do is put two more magazines of 124 grain through Glock magazines, and we've got 33 rounds in each. Might as well blow through a little bit of this. See how it does.
Okay, only 66 or so rounds there, but no failures. So I would love to chalk those three failures up to ammo. And I probably can, but I have to point them out. Um, shot mostly great, mostly great couple failures tonight and I think I did see one or two failures uh, the first time I took it out as well so got to mention those short of that and shy of that it's a really good gun it is it's a really good gun if you need this for something like I don't know rabbit hunting um, going after coyotes um, other fun just general nine millimeter plinking this is a sweet gun it really is Ruger PC Carbine. That is basically my review. I'm the late Boy Scout. Thanks for watching. See you later.